My name is Melinda Lewis. My husband named Noah is two years older than me, and our daughter named Daisy goes to an elementary school. We're both working parents. I'm fully committed to my job as a designer at a fashion company. Everything changed with a sudden phone call I received at work one day. What? My parents were in an accident. That news turned my mind blank. My travel-loving parents had met with a tragic accident during one of their trips and had passed away. They enjoyed traveling regularly, and this time, my father was driving. On their way to a tourist destination, their car unfortunately fell off a cliff. By the time passersby found them, they had already passed away. In a panic, I wrapped up my work and immediately contacted my husband. Hey, I need to talk to you. What's up? I'm pretty busy right now. Actually, my parents have died. What? Seriously? Yes. It seems there was an accident during their trip. By the time they were found, it was too late. As I delved into memories of my parents, tears unknowingly began to flow. Holding the phone, I couldn't stop the tears. Then Noah said, Melinda, this is no time to cry. Why are you being so cold? My parents have left this world. Do you understand? I'm on a business trip right now. Don't call me over trivial matters. Trivial? That's a terrible thing to say. What were my parents to you? I acknowledge I owe them gratitude. But to me, they were still outsiders. There's no point dwelling on the dead. You might have to deal with funerals and other procedures soon. But I can make it. What? Are they not family for you? Why would you say that? Because to me, they're strangers. I can't afford to miss work for strangers. If you understand, I'm hanging up now. I was simply stunned by Noah's attitude. When did he become someone who could so casually utter such cruel words? I seriously wondered. At that moment, it felt like something inside me had crumbled away. Noah used to put me first and treated me with deep affection. When he found out I was pregnant, he cried with joy and was overly considerate during the pregnancy. Since Daisy's birth, our family was supposed to be living harmoniously, but about a year ago, Noah's attitude began to gradually change. He began to avoid home, and his attitude towards the family grew increasingly cold. It seemed less that he disliked me and more that he had lost interest altogether. In the early days of our marriage, he used to notice even the smallest changes, but now, he doesn't even acknowledge a dramatic change in my hairstyle. No matter how much I tried, I couldn't catch his eye, and it only led to contempt. Hey, what's with that outfit? Why don't you dress your age? That floral skirt is a bit pathetic, isn't it? He teased with a laugh. Don't say that. You used to compliment me on it. Huh. You've changed a bit in appearance since we got married. Women change after having kids, huh? He chuckled mockingly. Thus, he mercilessly continued to mock my appearance. His words deeply wounded me. The rift that had developed between us was also felt by Daisy. She was concerned about the harsh criticism I received from Noah and always looked out for me. As I sat in the living room, feeling downcast, my mother-in-law named Olivia, with whom we lived, appeared. In fact, when Daisy started elementary school, we built a new house and started living with my in-laws. What's the matter, crying like that at your age? Actually, my parents. They've passed away. Oh, oh. How come? It seems they were in an accident during their trip. Oh, dear. Both at the same time. You must feel a bit lucky, right? The insurance payout will be double. Let's take this opportunity to go out and eat something nice. How can you say something so cold? My parents are gone. How can you be so insensitive? Every life comes to an end eventually. It's just that theirs came a little sooner. Stop crying and start preparing dinner. I'm starving. Olivia was the typical difficult mother-in-law. I had hoped for some words of comfort upon the news of my own parents' death, but it seemed empathy was too much to expect from her. Afterward, with the help of relatives, I began to arrange the funeral. Citing business, Noah did not even show his face at the funeral. As I was disappointed, I decided to start divorce proceedings after the funeral of my parents. Once everything was prepared, I left a voicemail for Noah, who was on a business trip. I'm going on a long business trip. Please take care of your parents. I had no regrets left. I packed my bags and left the house I had lived in and cherished for many years. A few hours later, while I was focused on my work, I was summoned by the HR department. Apparently, Noah had rushed into the office, sweating profusely. 
I had been deliberately ignoring all contact from him. He must have thought that if he came to my workplace, he could see me. I disliked the idea of seeing his face again, but I didn't want to cause a scene, so I reluctantly agreed to meet him. As I headed to the entrance, there was Noah, extremely agitated. Upon seeing me, he shouted with a mix of anger and bewilderment. What have you done? My parents are in a serious situation. I can't forgive this. I'm troubled by your sudden appearance. I'm in the middle of work. Aren't you supposed to be on a business trip? I rushed back after a call from my father. After you left, the family hasn't been able to have a proper meal. And what happened to my parents? My mother is hospitalized, and my father can't move. All your stuff is gone too. I decided to explain the situation to him, one detail at a time. Your mother's diabetes suddenly got worse, and she needed to be hospitalized urgently. You knew she had diabetes, right? I knew, but she always seemed healthy at home. Was it that serious? I replied calmly. She looked fine on the outside, but the actual inside, her condition was deteriorating. She suffered from severe headaches and eventually collapsed. The tests showed she was in danger, so she was admitted. She hardly took her prescribed medication and neglected her regular checkups, which made her condition worse. That's terrible. But why is my father bedridden? He showed no signs of illness and was always full of energy, wasn't he? I gently explained the situation to him. When your father was trying to take your mother to the hospital, he suffered a sudden back spasm. He's always had a bad back, especially when lifting heavy things. And considering your mother's weight, it was inevitable that it would take a toll on his back. How could this happen? He was shocked and at a loss for words. I continued to explain a past episode calmly. Two years ago, she was diagnosed with diabetes, but she's always favored foods high in fat and sugar. There were always sweets within reach, and she constantly snacked on things like fries and chocolates. I tried to offer her meals with less fat, thinking of her health, but she wouldn't accept them. One evening at dinner, she expressed her dissatisfaction. What is this? This so-called stew has no taste of meat at all. I tried to explain to her. Thinking of your health, I cooked it as vegan. It's good for you and provides a feeling of fullness. This isn't a proper meal. I want to eat as I always have. This is not something I would eat. She rejected it, throwing the stew I made into the sink. This wasn't a one-time event. My cooking had been dismissed like this many times. Even when witnessing this, Noah said nothing, and sometimes he even blamed me. Hey, could you stop doing things that upset mom? That's too earlier seemed like a challenge to her. I responded quietly. I made the vegan stew with mom's health in mind. Continuing to eat high-calorie foods can lead to life-threatening issues. I was trying to make meals that wouldn't be a burden on her health. That's an unnecessary worry. Mom's healthy, and she should be able to eat what she likes. And stop making meals like today's. It affects me when you do that. Even when my father-in-law was present during our arguments, he never intervened. It felt more like a strong desire to avoid being involved than indifference. Despite being tossed about by the actions and words of Olivia and Noah, I had endured. I had thought about divorce many times, but I couldn't bring myself to do it because of Daisy and the fear of taking her father away. I was concerned about the social stigma of a fatherless household, but I no longer had any desire to live under the same roof as this man. My decision was already made. I told Noah calmly, I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk any further. Can you leave, as this is causing a disturbance? He shook his head firmly. I can't accept this. I'm not leaving until we have a proper talk. I sighed and suggested. All right, let's go somewhere away from here. Since it was lunchtime, we headed to a nearby cafe to continue our conversation. As soon as we sat down, Noah began to question me earnestly. Then, what's your plan for my parents' care? You're going to quit your job and look after them, aren't you? I ribbited in surprise. What are you talking about? Why should I have to look after your parents? That's your responsibility. They are strangers. He raised his voice. Strangers? They are my parents. They are supposed to be your family too. We might not be blood related, but our family bond should remain unchanged. I replied quietly. No, once we divorce, I will be a stranger to you, and I won't have any such duty. There will be no reason for me to care for your parents anymore. 
He asked with confusion. Stranger, what did you just say? Realizing he hadn't understood the full impact, I clarified. Didn't you see the divorce paper I left in the living room? I've signed it already. I was waiting for you to sign it so we could move forward with the proceedings. He muttered in a daze. Divorce. Clearly, he had been too preoccupied with his parents' crisis to notice our marital issues. Don't draw attention here. Please, sit down and let's discuss this calmly. Still shaken, he inquired. Are you seriously thinking about divorce? I responded decisively. Yes, I am serious. Do you think I'm joking? But I thought you were just going on an extended business trip. That long business trip was not precise. In reality, I'm transferring to another branch in a different state. The move is scheduled for later. He was shocked and said, I wasn't informed of any such thing. I explained to him calmly. I've arranged for a transfer with the company considering the divorce. It's not necessary for you to know to which state. He was at a loss for words. Are you really determined to get a divorce? Don't you think it's pitiful for Daisy? His face, standing in front of me, told me he hadn't seen this coming at all. I kept my composure in front of him and answered, Isn't it obvious? Do you think choosing divorce is unfortunate for Daisy? Do you believe you have the right to say such things? Haven't you forgotten all your actions up to now? He was confused and counted. What are you talking about? What have I done? I've been working and earning for the family. Don't I deserve any gratitude? Gratitude? For what? Contributing to the household expenses. He was speechless. Citing a decrease in his salary, he began to skimp on living expenses two years ago. We used to share the financial load, but it gradually all shifted to me. Some months, he contributed nothing at all. Luckily, I had a stable income that was higher than his. Shouldering the shortfall of living expenses, all the child care, and suffering from a troublesome Olivia at home. Where is the benefit of living with you? While emotional, he defended his view. It's ridiculous to talk about pros and cons in a marriage. We married for love, didn't we? Yes, I once thought that. But now, there's no love left for you from my side. And you have someone else you care about, right? He mumbled. What are you talking about? But couldn't hide his distress. I faced him calmly and stated matter-of-factly. Let's stop hiding things. I know about the affair you have with the young lady at work. It's been going on for a year, hasn't it? Emily, was it? The one with long hair and a voluptuous figure. She's just your type. He scrambled to explain. Hold on. You must be misunderstanding something. Did someone feed you a false story? No, I had a detective investigate. I had my suspicions. But never did I imagine an affair with a married woman ten years your junior. She's newly wed too. What will become of her now? He looked confused. You had a detective on me? Absolutely. With a divorce coming, I have to ensure the terms are in my favor. With alimony from the two of you, I won't have any financial worries for some time. I inwardly smiled at Noah's obvious surprise. After deciding on divorce, I had hired a detective agency to secretly track Noah's actions. At that time, he began to neglect our home and showed suspicious behavior. He increased the security on his phone and frequently made secretive calls. He would also often leave the house with a large bat. Though I turned a blind eye, my suspicions were indeed correct. His partner was a temp staff member at his company, and it seemed she had initiated the approach. He began to speak defensively. That woman. She's the type who has been involved with multiple men for a long time, and she came on to me at a social gathering. Of course, I rejected her. But she was insistent. So you're trying to say you're not at fault. It's true she may have had relations with others, but ultimately, you were the one involved with her. He was visibly shocked by this revelation. She was with others too. Really? With a note of revelation, I presented the facts. According to the detective agency, she's been seeing three men, including you. But she said I was the only one. I calmly laid out the accusation as he hit the table in clear frustration. The detective's information revealed that her husband was a high-ranking executive in a large company. He was much older than her, and the marriage appeared to be one of financial convenience. Noah's infidelity was unforgivable, and so was that of his mistress. They seemed to share a similar disposition in this mess. Still trying to justify himself, 
he continued. But Wachi and I had was just a diversion. We never intended to ruin our families. I looked at him sternly and counted. Do you think that just because it was a diversion, anything goes? Aside from me, what about Daisy? If she faces bullying at school due to your affair, how do you plan to take responsibility? He couldn't conceal his dismay as he responded. That's. The fault lies with those who slander. The problem is with the children who meddle in such matters. I pressed further with a questioning tone. You always find someone else to blame. You can't even apologize for having an affair, can you? You seem to have no regret whatsoever. He grudgingly admitted his fault. All right, I was wrong. I'll break it off with her, so forgive me. I delivered my final ultimatum with composure. That won't solve anything. It will divorce you. And I will claim alimony from both you and her. At the mention of alimony, his face turned ashen in an instant. In a panic, he said. Does this mean we have to disclose our problems to Emily's husband if we take legal action? She's newly married. It would be tragic for her to be embroiled in such troubles. He made a considerate remark about his affair partner, but I responded firmly. The one deserving pity is her husband, who was betrayed in the midst of his newlywed life. By the way, I've already informed Emily's husband about your affair. He was astonished and exclaimed. What? I pressed on quietly. Hadn't you heard anything from Emily about this matter? He answered with bewilderment. No. She's been on leave due to illness recently, and I haven't been able to contact her. The shock must have made it difficult for her to reach out, he said in a panic. I never imagined it would come to this. What will I do if this spreads at work? That would be a consequence of your own actions, wouldn't it? Besides, it seems you were using your paid leave for these secret meetings, he asked with shaking. How do you know all this? I laid out the facts. I was suspicious of your frequent business trips, so I inquired directly at your company. It turns out you weren't on business at all, but using your paid leave. I also checked Emily's leave records and found she was off on the same days as you. It's clear you two were going somewhere together. He was speechless and muttered. What have I done? Watching him hang his head in silence, I knew he had accepted the reality. Just then, an unexpected person approached us. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be off from work today, aren't you? He turned around in surprise. Manager. Standing there was his direct supervisor, the manager. Apparently, he often used this cafe during his lunchtime. Noah's face was a picture of dismay. The manager continued. I heard you were taking a day off for family reasons. Noah stammered. Yes, that's actually. The manager seemed to understand there was some trouble from Noah's discomposed state. Not wanting to miss this opportunity, I decided to tell the manager about Noah's actions. The manager recognized me as his wife, having met me several times before. You might not be aware, but this man has been having an inappropriate relationship with a temp worker named Emily Smith. The manager was shocked and raised his voice. What? Is that true? He glared at Noah and exclaimed loudly enough for others to hear. Noah hastily pleaded with the manager. Manager, please lower your voice. Everyone is looking over here. It's only natural to be surprised when a subordinate is doing something like this. And he was using his paid leave to meet with her secretly. At such a busy time. He hurriedly tried to explain and pleaded with his boss. I'm sorry, manager. I plan to end things with her. So please don't discuss this with other staff. The manager sighed deeply and said something serious. Do you think that kind of excuse is going to fly? I will report this to the executive team. Of course, you're in sales. Sales is about selling trust in oneself along with the product. No one will trust someone who deceives their family. I won't fire you, but you can't stay in your current position. Noah pleaded desperately. Wait a minute. Sales is all I know how to do. If I'm transferred, my salary will be cut. The manager was adamant. I'm not interested in your personal circumstances. What you should do now is apologize to your wife. You've caused her considerable emotional pain. I admit I was wrong, but work is a separate matter. The manager replied coldly. Work isn't related. That's exactly what I am addressing. It's regrettable, but I don't plan to work with someone who betrays their family. 
You're off the next project. I was thinking to myself. Noah was apparently leading a crucial project at his company, and its success was tied to his promotion. He had poured his passion into this project over a long period. He made a case to the manager. That's too harsh. You said yourself that I was the right man for the job. The manager spoke with finality. Given what you've done, I've lost the desire to keep you in a position of responsibility. Luckily, our company has other talented individuals. I will be passing the leadership position to another competent person for future projects. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go and report this to the executive team. He left the cafe after saying this. He seemed to be in a hurry to return to the company to report Noah's misconduct, despite it being the usual lunchtime. After the manager left, Noah sat dejectedly with his head down. Everything has been ruined. How could this happen? Witnessing Noah's despair, I informed him about the next steps. From now on, the lawyer will handle the proceedings, so we will communicate through them. I left the lawyer's contact information in the living room. You can reach out to them if needed. He asked me, tears welling up. Are you truly going through with the divorce? I nodded decisively to Noah's question, confirming my decision. I've repeated myself, haven't I? To end your betrayal and continue living with you and your mother is unbearable for me. You've been there all along, turning a blind eye to the hurtful words from your mother. I've expressed my desire to end our cohabitation numerous times, but you dismissed my appeals as mere exaggeration and neglected the fact that I was suffering. He expressed his regret in a flustered manner. I had no idea you felt so cornered. I'll pay more attention to my mother from now on. My decision was already firm, and there was no shaking it. It's too late for such words. You may now face the hardships of caring for elderly parents, but I will not be involved. You're free to find your way, but I'm embarking on a new path for my life. He continued, unable to hide his confusion and anxiety. But what am I supposed to do so suddenly? Hospital bills are mounting, and the thought of caregiving while working is overwhelming. I suggested a logical course of action to him. Have you considered changing jobs? Your current company's position will likely become unstable, and a fresh start in a new setting could be one solution. He begged in a tone of hopelessness. It's easy for you to say. Please reconsider, won't you? I declared calmly but with firm resolution. It's no use. I've already arranged my transfer at work and started the preparations for Daisy's school transfer. There's no returning to a life with you. He implored, tears streaming down his face. No. I simply cannot accept a divorce. His appeal did not move me, and I felt relief that an end to this marriage was in sight. His tears no longer held the meaning they once did to me. As he began to cry out loud in the cafe, I felt bewildered. His actions turned the atmosphere of the place, resembling a child who couldn't get what they wanted. Feeling the gaze of others and my own embarrassment, I left the cafe, leaving him behind. I was informed that he continued to cry for a while after I had left. A young onlooker fought the scene amusing and filmed a video, pixelating the faces before uploading it to social media. The post was quickly removed, but not before catching the attention of Noah's colleagues, and rumors started to spread. True to my word, I proceeded with the divorce through a lawyer and sought alimony from both Noah and Emily. Additionally, Noah was ordered to pay child support, which the lawyer ensured was timely. I later learned that the fair partner eventually divorced as well. I was on my way to regaining a peaceful life. Meanwhile, Noah was also facing alimony demands from Emily's ex-spouse, leading to his resignation from his job. Noah and Emily continued their affair for some time, but she refused to care for his in-laws and left him. She appeared to be leveraging her youth to seek a new future. Noah, needing to care for his father, was compelled to live off part-time jobs, foregoing full-time employment. On the other hand, I was fully engaged in my new role at work and my dedication was rewarded with significant responsibilities. The job was fulfilling, and I had successfully achieved a salary raise. Daisy adjusted swiftly to her new school, enjoying her days with her new friends. I had no regrets about transitioning to life as a single mother. Watched over from heaven by my parents, I was resolute in growing personally while supporting Daisy's growth. With a positive approach to each day, I was confidently looking ahead to our future.